Prepare to die. I did it. G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a quad double barrel shotgun with bullets exploding for area damage, and that's critical meter is going to be filling 15% faster. Sort of a terrible lineup of legendary effects, there's not a lot I can actually complain about with that, so yeah, it's a pretty decent weapon. With the hardened receiver on this, we're doing 177 damage completely unspecced. Just going over the attachments, we've got the true barrel to tighten up that hip fire spread. Same with the align stock, but the align stock will help us out a little bit with the recoil. I tried this with the true stock and the barrel would just kick up like you wouldn't believe. So I'm going to reduce that a little bit with the align stock and just make up for that with for the use of skeet shooter. With all of those things together, what happens is basically I get a lot more range out of this than I would with regular shotguns because I don't have a suppressor on this obviously but yeah the pallets are going to be in a nice tight spread allowing me to reach out a little bit further which means we don't have to take as much damage that being said I'm going to be using power armor because I can't rely on stealth and I'm going to get shot quite a lot even though this ammo capacity has gone from 2 to 8 which is a, de a decent upgrade on that Quad, to my mind, is only really effective on weapons that don't have a lot of ammunition to start with. Now, I've never seen a quad fat man or a quad missile launcher, but those types of weapons would be astoundingly powerful. I, don't, I think they're disallowed because I think they'd be overpowered, but something like that would be absolutely monstrous. And this is kind of no exception, because obviously you're not limited by the horrible ammo capacity. Granted, you could chuck on the um, quick hands perk to alleviate that with most shotguns if you want to use a bloodied version of these to get better damage, but the consistency offered by the quad effect is definitely a good thing on a double barrel shotgun. Think of it as like a harpoon gun. You kind of want the quad effect on that one too. So let's go ahead and upgrade this thing with some perks. It's a shotgun obviously so we'll seek out and find all of the shotgun perks and equip those things. I think it's regular shotgun now. We've also got scatter shot to increase our reload speed and reduce the weight of them. So weightless on this thing would kind of be negligible to be honest because it weighs only, only slightly over a pound now but I think I've got reduced weight armor pieces as well. But like I said before, that'll help our hip fire accuracy and spread, which is good. Um, concentrated fire is kind of there of monitoring limbs. That is kind of going to be used in conjunction with Enforcer. Mainly against Scorch Beast to check if we've actually crippled the limb, forcing them to ground. And that should be good. Obviously, as an explosive weapon, it is boosted by Demo Expert. And we've got Bloody Mess to boost it even more. Now, I can't use anything what I'd usually use. In luck, so critical savvy will, I guess, synergize quite well with the whoops, wrong button with the extra 15% on critical meters. But now we're doing 364 damage, which is almost the amount of days in a year. Alrighty, so here we are, as always, outside of the green cordial factory. Let's just make sure I'm actually grabbing the perks out of this. Now, I've got um, emergency protocols, which is lying dormant right now, so I could probably get away with chucking on the jetpack torso, even though the jetpack is bugged right now. Let me test this. Okay, first jump goes alright. Maybe if when I activate the jetpack, that's when it breaks. Let's just shoot people. Now, usually when I'm using shotguns, you'll find that if I'm hitting them from this range, I'll get huge damage penalties, which I kind of am right now. There's a little bit of lag between my bullets hitting and the actual damage coming in, which is a little bit of a problem, but once you get adrenaline running up, it'll be pretty damn easy, and we can fly around. We've got Enforcer, and we just float around. Okay, less jumping around, more aiming, I think. And with the use of Scattershot, we get a heap more reload speed and Enforcer traps them to the ground, which is good. And if you get a cripple on them, they generally stagger too. So what will happen is they tend to stop shooting at you whilst they're doing their stagger animations, which is good. And if they're a melee character or dude with a super sledge, just cripple the legs and you'll be laughing. Probably went overkill with the old power armor. I might actually be good enough to use this without power armor, which allows me to um, use my unyielding stuff for, I guess, Vats thing, maybe luck. Chuck on serendipity, maybe, to resist more damage, so might actually be a little bit better when it comes to usual things. Tell you what, I'll run this out with a with a power armor suit against these mutants because some of them carry rifles and that one's carrying a missile launcher, which I can shrug off in power armor. Very nice. See, here's a melee dude. Just shoot him in the kneecaps. He stops moving. Threat neutralized very, very easily, even before he's dead and I've got the XP very good weapon against melee enemies. That's kind of your best bet when it comes to 
stopping something like that. I guess shotguns kind of do counter melee enemies in some sort of way, but using this thing in PvP is probably not really that useful anymore. Shotguns tend to, you know, get outclassed by rifles, by, by Tesla rifles, by legacy energy weapons. They're all, they're all running the meta now. I don't think there's any place for these types of weapons in PvP right now, so look the other way if you're looking for a PvP weapon out of this. Granted, the stagger chance could be very useful against a guy who's stealth boying, because as far as my knowledge goes, I do believe you actually get um, that damage with the uh, limbs and crippling and staggering with the explosive damage. Let me just test this out for a second. Maybe his right leg, leg is crippled and we actually haven't shot him yet. Well, at least without the explosive damage. That's just a doggo. We're at 70% health. Yeah, we can tank this pretty easily. There's my jetpack. Yeah, it's probably not worth using a jetpack in here since my super will already get me to the roof anyway. So I'm, what I'm going to do is chuck on the emergency protocols once again. That'll lay dormant until we're actually at a state of health. And yeah, I'm not going to sabotage my chances of actually succeeding in here without death by killing myself or lowering my health using the explosive damage but that being said I can kind of um, fuck around when it comes to these super mutants I'm not really in a rush to kill them and you'll see that the explosive damage alone is jack shit now I've done a little bit of data mining I guess not really data mining but um, a little bit of searching using F uh, the I think it's a Skyrim edit they just tuned it to work with Fallout 76 and um, how they nerfed explosive shotguns is the explosive shotgun legendary effect is different to the regular one So with that in mind When we get mod support, that's not a terrible meat hook by the way. I think I've got basher too, so I'm making good use out of that With that in mind if you really really wanted to have shotguns, you know retain to their former glory Provided we ever get mod support for this game what you could probably do is get a mod that allows you to attach legendary effects on your weapons is just kind of like that. Okay, the bashing damage is still garbage, but still. Yeah, you could do that, and then you could just run around with a shotgun like they were pre-patch. At least that's how I think it is. Unless if it's like, if you've got an explosive on a shotgun, then it'll, it'll always be that. But you could probably get around that. It's interesting, that's how they kind of did it. Obviously, it's it's got the same range penalties as a shotgun has because you can't snipe people away with it anymore. It'd be nice if I could cripple you with my bashing damage, which I think is part of basher, but still, the bashing damage needs to be buffed because it is garbage. There's no reason. Even with, like, the bayonet attachment, I think it comes in the form of a spiked muzzle for this, which you'll, you won't poke them with that. You'll still hit them with the stock anyway. It's times like these where I wish I had the jetpack. Um, yeah, the, the animation doesn't change, which is kind of baffling. Now, one of these fuckers had a missile launcher. He's got a hammer now, which should be easy enough to beat, because I can just shoot him in the leg. Oh, okay, he was a smart super mutant. He realized he could get away with shooting me with a missile launcher just now. There's another legendary. Let's see what he's got for me. He gets back up, because legendary regeneration resets the limbs, too. So that's why the Scorch Beast Queen... When she gets stuck and regenerates, takes back off again. Not hard to observe that, but something worth mentioning, I reckon. So, at this point, we've got a fairly good amount of adrenal reaction. We've boosted our explosive damage from 6 to 12, which is just, you know, we're just basically one-shotting the Scorch Beast Queen at this time. Let's have a peek of that damage. 674. So, in terms of damage, this thing is definitely going alright. Like, you can't really go wrong against, like, regular mobs, but, you know, when there's enemies in the game that like to resist the amount of damage this thing can put out, I'm looking at you bats, you know, you can have a little bit more trouble, although you can still use Enforcer to your advantage. Now, I'm not sure whether I swapped out Nerd Rage for Gunsmith Rank 3, but we'll soon see in a second. And with my current setup in my power armor, I could probably get away with running this at Nerd Rage, provided I don't level up and, um... Ooh, cracky, that was close. I feel like something jumped up at me just now, like a doggo. I'm not really sure what happened. Still, I survived that. That's pretty good. And, yeah, be careful when you're throwing around the giblets, because I've had a, um, anti-armor explosive Gatling Plasma throw so many giblets around that it weren't, wasn't able to actually deal damage anymore. 
And when you're firing, I believe it is seven pallets per shot. I think that's what it was in Fallout 4, plus, uh, plus one if you had the advanced receiver. Um, well, seven explosions is a, a little bit to um, put there, place there on the server. So it's a, been a pretty cruisy run. It's been a slow run, but it's been cruisy enough. So I'm not too vexed about that. There we go, there's Nerd Rage active. We'll have a peek at the damage after we're done with these turds. Yeah, stop shooting at me. What did you, what did you have for me? More crap. Actually, um, I've, I've actually got bases loaded too, so there's a chance that you'll see a script dump, like either before this video or after this video. I think we're done at this point. Any super mutant that didn't hear that probably would have been... Well, they're all dead, but we've got 855 damage, which is... Very good. I'm going to jump out of this power armor, and we'll see what we can do against the tools. Alrighty, the survival bars have been topped up. We've got a little bit of extra health, and we're still running dodgy, and I've swapped out critical savvy for serendipity. So, let's see how we go. Well, I'm immediately targeting the legs, which is rather sadistic, but effective against the ghouls. Now, I'm not really sure if serendipity can actually block out the rads, so there's been a few moments where I would have blocked out the ballistic damage of being punched in the face by a ghoul, but I'm pretty sure the rads still remain. Now, very easily can you take out a bunch of rampaging ghouls with this weapon because you just cripple all of their limbs. Um, we can't have any explosive radius increasing perks like Grenadier to help us out, but you can actually get away with just kind of shooting at the ground in front of these guys, and what'll happen is basically they'll either stop moving, they'll, you know, yeah, stop moving, stop going so fast, meaning they'll fucking be stuck in, like, first gear. And it'll be pretty easy, easy to kill them at least. Let's go for... let's go torso. That seems to be a pretty decent way to go about this. I don't have gun through, so I'm going to have to enter that constantly, but... You know, just making the best use as I possibly can out of the criticals. I'm going to try to remember to pick up the legendaries, because it really fucking triggers people when I don't do that. Oh no, you appear to have been shot behind something that you couldn't pass through. You've been outplayed, ghoul. Wow, what a berserker's weapons being offered today. No, that one. Kill the fat one. A slow, um, methodical approach can actually be applied to these weapons because it's very easy to, con to control things. Probably not as easy as a suppressed shotgun because I probably would have almost been done by now, but... I can, I can definitely feel it taking a little bit longer than usual. You're not dead yet. That's interesting. I've also noticed that it kind of aimed down sights. I Quite honestly, I don't know why it's doing that. And you're on the ground, you poor bastard. You don't get a humane death, you get exploded. But, yeah. Definitely a cruisy run against the ghouls. Got a little sloppy, got hit one or two, three times, but... Nothing to really complain about here. When it comes to crowd control, shotguns will rarely ever let you down or pinch that Gatling laser because, well, you can just stop them running at you. Enforcer is an incredibly powerful perk. It turns shotguns into, um, well, let's say, melee weapons with ammo requirements into showstoppers. It, it's a must-have essential perk for shotgunners. Fuck you, manager. You're getting this. Nice. Alrighty, so Swan stood up, he did his big old roar, but now he's back down. I hope the camera caught that, but um, today we're just going to mess with Swan a little bit. So we'll give a gun bash. He, oh, big scary Swan, mate. We'll just find his legs. You don't have that leg anymore. And this leg will be taken out of commission. And now he can't do a goddamn thing. He's still got head tracking though, which is kind of neat. So, instead of just, like, killing him, putting him out of his misery... Yeah, you try to hit me, mate. See how well that goes for you. Instead, let's go into photo mode and just, uh, memorize this occasion, eh? Maybe you'll go... Got a good pose in here, some... Ooh, that's underwater. Okay, I'm on the wrong side there, hang on. Ah, he's hit me! No, Swan. Back down, right now. Ooh, I like how he reacts to that. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's try that again. There, pretty as a picture. All right, Swan, now you die. Haha, <laughs> he falls down again because I would have staggered him. And then the game realized, hey, you can't go through your stagger animation. 
you're at the bottom of the lake. So we got up and got back down again. Weird game. Weird, weird game. As far as explosive shotguns go, or explosive on shotguns, I don't recommend too much else than that. Because, one, it helps the enforcer perks even... Okay, you're a tanky bastard, but you'll soon... You'll soon get stuck in your tracks, that's good. He can still spit loogies at me. Which is interesting. Oh, you're still alive. I'm surprised. That's okay. We killed him very, very easily, so... You know, disarming the threats by just kneecapping them is fun. Oh no, looks like the Mylert Queen has showed up. Let me just, uh... Let me just target those legs and make you immediately faceplant. That is why explosive on shotguns is so good, because I, I honestly feel like that you get the benefits from Enforcer. Not even, not like per shot, but per explosion. It's, it's excellent. It's a really good perk to have it. And honestly, I don't recommend, like I said, too much else on a shotgun as a secondary effect as explosive. Okay, it is just a mile at Queen. Let's continue to stagger her to make her face plant. Probably committing animal cruelty right now, but I don't think Peter watches me, so I should be fine. But uh, in my defense, she did huck acidic loogies at me, and that didn't feel good. One thing that could make shotguns viable against something like a Scorch Beast Queen is I believe that... Okay, that was a weakened sentry bot. I believe they're bringing in the, like, the 4th and 5th star for legendary effects, and I think on the list might be kneecapper and staggering, which is, I mean, it's going to synergize with Enforce already, um, pretty well, but you've also got something like wounding, and for those of you who didn't play Fallout 4, if you had a wounding weapon, you'd get 25, um, extra damage, just a little bit of bleed damage, um, per hit, I don't know why my screen blurred there. That usually means that there's a sloth around and he's did his little animation where he shakes his mushies off the top of him and... I don't know. But... Yeah, a lot of good that screaming does. But, yeah, since it was per projectile, what you could do is get a... Get a... Bastard. You could get a, um, shotgun and with the advanced receiver you get 8x25 if you manage to land all of your pallets on a target as damage over time. And that damage would not be able to be resisted by anything, it was like a drain health. Even on robots, which, you know, can't really be wounded, would be susceptible to that. Okay, that wasn't a ghoul, that was something else. Where do you think you're going, mate? No, you can stop right there. Wow, I'm impressed with the range of the shotgun. If I had a suppressor, definitely would have wouldn't have nailed him from back there. But yeah, so if you can apply that much bleed damage to a Scorch Beast Queen, I think you might have a shotgun worthy of actually being queen tested. But as it stands right now, I've had times where I've just, you know, fucked around, used a shotgun against Scorch Beast Queen, bloody and explosive, so she's going to resist a lot of that damage. But since the damage per projectile is so low already, you're barely hitting for, I don't know, like you'd be lucky to hit for over 50 damage a shot, which is not good. So if you could, you know, augment it with some wounding effects, maybe they'll figure out it's too overpowered. I'm not even sure how it's going to work for PvP either, because shotguns would definitely be a lot better then. Maybe they'll have a check in there. I don't know how to do this because I'm familiar with the creation kit, but if the player, if the race is human, or i.e. a player, then this effect doesn't apply. I'll just have a, a, a check there, and that might actually balance it a little bit. Unless, maybe if they want to go whether they're aggroed or not. So if you want to actually commit to PvP, you could do it. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how that all works. Hang on. There was a sloth somewhere. I'm going to go kick his ass. Wow, he's all the way over here. I put my cursor all the way back there on, like, one pixel. So you're going to pay for making me lose my vision for, like, two seconds. These have got caps on them, too. I don't know where they have the caps or why they have them, but they're there. Oh, no, it's Attack of the Doggers. How will I ever defeat them? I don't like it when doggers yelp. you got to blow their heads off so they don't feel any pain. Poor dogs. Alright, crunch time, make or break. I rate weapons on not only damage output, but versatility. And if it's shit against one type of enemy, then it is a failure. Because we need versatility in our builds. We don't have 15 special and everything. So I'm going to be very interested how we go against the Scorch Beast Queen. No, just a baby Scorch Beast. Never mind the Queen. I've already explained why that's a bad idea. Hey, get on the ground, would ya? 
Alright, so a couple of gun zombies to worry about. If you don't want to deal with them and don't want to have idiots respawning, that was uh, an unintentional double shot there, but yeah. Um, what you can do is just break their legs and they can't hit you. Nice of you to resist all of this damage. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. That's totally worth it. Shit, a lot of numbers are being thrown at me right now. I should be killing them a lot faster than this. You know, I really thought, I really, really thought, honestly, that having private servers would stop all of this dodgy bullshit where you'd that hit and then they'd just heal. And that's a common problem with shotguns, actually. It might have something to do with what I was theorizing before. Putting that many explosions on maybe the hitboxes, the overlapping hitboxes, causes the game to do more damage than it think it does, and then it corrects itself. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm being taken from damage. Okay, so as, as it turns out, I didn't need power armor at all. I must have had a bad experience with the last double barrel shotgun I used, but no, you can totally get away with it like this. And unfortunately, there is no third Scorch Beast, but <clears throat> never mind, here's one. Make sure we are reloaded, and start unloading. Are you kidding me? That's a Berserker's Gamma Gun. That's okay. Um, I've, gotten a, I've gotten a gift from old mate Queen, and she says, use it to kill my children. Well, at least that's what I thought she said. I, I don't speak Scorch Beast Queens. I can only predict their behavior. I don't speak their language. I think I must have crippled this asshole's limbs, though, because he is... He's on the ground, so that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna spam the shit out of the trigger because there hasn't been a moment in this video where I've actually... Never mind, I got staggered and then killed. Quite honestly, not a lot of things I could have done to prevent that, except for, you know, actually clearing out the little guys before moving on to the bat. That was just bad play on my part there. I thought I could kill the bat a little bit quicker, but, you know, none of that would have happened if the, um, the damage didn't bug out on me, because I'm sure as shit, I'm sure as hell that that fucking Scorch Beast should have been killed with all of that damage. So I think, I think we can just blame this one on Todd Howard and call it a day. There's another dogger. Poor bastard. Alright, who's left? There's just a couple of, uh, Scorched hanging out in the grass because I've shattered their legs and they can't get up. That one was coming from this direction. Now, I'm pretty sure dogs aren't smart enough to wield guns in this game, but I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it there and, and, unless I get shot during this little outro sequence. But anyways, there you go. Quad explosive uh, double barrel shotgun. Now with sneak attack potential. Still, can nail things from pretty good distances, but like I said before, not using a suppressor will greatly increase your ability. But yeah. I was actually able to use this thing without power armor, which was interesting. Maybe in um, Moody's place, I would have gone a lot... Maybe I would have been killed if I didn't use power armor, because I was kind of locked in a close quarters match. So maybe I did use it right, but it looks like out here you can get away with it. That extra um, special stuff, I didn't really use this thing in bats all that much, simply because, well, it's kind of accurate enough to be fired like this anyway. Nice. That was a unearned critical. But yeah, it's, it's got versatility. For some reason, this does perform a lot better than other shotguns that I've used against the Scorch Beasts, and I think that might just be because of the rate of fire. Even a combat shotgun with fire rate isn't going to fire that quickly, so the DPS on this is definitely good. Too bad you can't shove a suppressor on it, that's the only bad thing I reckon. Thank you very much for watching, guys.